and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I am going to be uh, reviewing the Ninja Programmable XL 14 cup coffee maker. Um, I know a lot of people, their thing on YouTube is doing uh, product reviews. Uh, mine is not for a couple reasons. Uh, one, I'm not making any money off YouTube at this point. So I can't afford to go out and uh, and buy stuff just for the sake of reviewing it. Um, and also, I just uh, there are a lot of good product reviewers who uh, that that's what they do. If I'm doing a, a product review, it's either it's something. Well, first of all, it's always something that I bought because I felt the need for it to use it. Um, and if I do a review, it's because I either really liked it, really didn't like it, or I didn't feel like could find enough information before I bought it to make a perfect, if you want to call it, decision. And that's kind of the case uh, with this. I, I found a couple reviews online of this. One was a really good review. But the reviewer disclosed then that he's a Ninja affiliate, which uh, is why he didn't address any concerns. And I'll talk about the written reviews in a minute, positive and negative. Uh, I saw another review that was absolutely terrible. And, and again, nobody addressed the concerns. As far as the written reviews, the people who liked it said it made a good tasting cup of coffee. Uh, they, they like the fact that, you know, I saw just in quotation marks, 14 cups, 14 cups. But I'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, they said it was fast. They like the idea that the water reservoir is removable. Um, negative reviews say the reservoir leaks. Some people say right from the get-go, the reservoir leaked. Um now, the positive reviewers, some of them said it was fast. Some of the negative reviewers said it was slow. So that's something we're going we're gonna to find out. Uh, they also say it's impossible to for, pour a cup of coffee, especially when it's full from the carafe, without spilling it. Something else we're going to look at. Uh, something that I was curious and didn't find, out, find a lot about was... Um, yeah, the reservoir and the carafe can hold enough water for 14 cups. And again, I'll talk about the cups in a second. But what what stops a lot of uh, coffee makers, in fact, the one I have right now is a 12-cup coffee maker, but I can never make more than 10 cups because it won't hold enough coffee grounds. If I want to make, uh, yeah, yeah, I can put 12 cups of water, but it's going to be awful weak coffee because it won't hold enough grounds to properly uh, uh, saturate. Now, as for cups, what's a cup? When units of measure, you get a measuring cup, a cup is eight ounces. Uh, my coffee mug is 16 ounces. I don't usually fill it all the way to the top, but when I have a mug of coffee, I'm talking 12 to 14 ounces. Standard cup of coffee when you're talking about coffee, a cup is considered six ounces, but not with the Ninja. With the Ninja, the cup is five ounces. So think about this. You have your standard 12 cup coffee maker, which is what I have now at Black & Decker. It is 12 six ounce cups of water. The, the uh, reservoir will hold, which is 72 ounces of water. The 14 cup Ninja holds 14 five ounce cups of water, which is 70 ounces of water. So right there, they're, they're not being honest with you. This 14 cup Ninja, it actually makes less coffee than other brands that claim to be 12 cups. Now, what will make a difference is if uh, the basket holds enough coffee to actually make that many cups. Uh, both of the reviews I saw said it did, getting it out of the package, and I'm going to show you the unboxing next. I have my doubts, but we are going to find out. So now let us go on to the unboxing. Okay, so here we go. Uh, 
quick start right in into the top of the box. Some instructions which I will read. The carafe, which is a twist to remove lid. And the body of the uh, coffee maker itself. Comes with a uh, scoop. More instructions. Filter basket. A removable uh, water reservoir. So what I'm going to do is wash all these parts, uh, run through one cycle with just water, and then I'll be back when we're ready to make some coffee. Alrighty, everything's washed and cleaned. Uh, in, a, in a while I will uh, make some coffee, but first I, I want to take a few minutes to... Uh, look at uh, what the various buttons and functions on the machine are. Uh, my intention is not to do a tutorial about, you know, how to use each function. I just want to go over what is here. Obviously, the clock. I can set the hours and the minutes. Uh, this button is called the uh, freshness timer button. Um, it shows when the coffee was made to give you an idea of how long it has been sitting. Uh, the delay allows you to set the time you want the coffee to start brewing. Uh, if, you're, if you're only making one to four cups as opposed to uh, five to 14, you press this button and that will somehow adjust the way the brew is to optimize a smaller uh, batch, if you want to call it that. But you still only put one to four cups of water even when you press that button because the coffee machine will run through all the water in the reservoir. So this one to four cup doesn't adjust how much water is going through. It adjusts the way it is being brewed uh, for to op in the, in their words to optimize a smaller batch uh, you have your classic or your rich coffee uh, the rich brew i presume is a slower process we're going to find that out in a while um, on or off to start the brew cycle this clean is is a a slow hot brew that you would use with a descaler or vinegar and water uh, in, in cleaning the machine out and the uh, warming plate uh, by default is, is uh, two hours. You can adjust both the time anywhere from zero to four hours and the warming temperature low, medium or high. Um, I will be back in a little while 
to uh, now test out. And what I'm testing is the uh, taste of the coffee and the speed. I do not have a thermometer to check the temperature, so that's going to be my judgment by taste. And again, how fast the brew is and how the coffee comes out. So stay tuned. Before I start uh, my first test, I, I wanted to mention, because I've forgotten up until now, I got this Ninja from Sam's Club. Um, the original list price was $79.98, uh, $80. Uh, there was a special uh, <clears throat> sale recently, $20 off. So I, in essence, got it for $60. It was not something I desperately needed, but there were a few features like the removable reservoir and the supposed uh, extra large capacity that appealed to me. So I thought I'd give it a try. Also, as I mentioned earlier, the, the uh, reviews not addressing the concerns made me curious and I thought, well, I get a good, a good YouTube video out of this, if nothing else. Okay. Um, First thing to mention, and this could be a plus or a minus, the power cord is kind of short, which if you keep it on a kitchen counter, I guess is a good thing because you don't want a lot of extra power cords. Uh, on this table, my uh, receptacle is on the baseboard and the cord doesn't reach, so I need an extension cord. I mention that because if you want to, uh, I guess it's trendy now to do what they call a coffee bar, you might, ha you might need an extension cord. Okay, to get started, I have uh, in the uh, reservoir water up to the four cup mark. Um, there is the uh, one to four cup setting. I'm going to test a couple things. First of all, how this one to four cup setting works, how long it takes, and the difference between uh, the uh, classic and the rich brew. And I don't want to make a whole pot of each. Okay, I have the four cups of water. Using the scoop that came with the machine. This incidentally, I, I drink cheap coffee. I was raised on cheap coffee. And right now, I'm not a member of Costco or BJ's. I am a member of Sam's Club and the cheapest coffee I can find is this chuck full of nuts, three pound can from Sam's Club. Anyway, four cups of coffee, you have two scoops, which is four tablespoons. So there goes that. This is set uh, for the classic brew, and we're going to start it and start the stopwatch. Well, it's supposed to beep when it's done. I haven't heard a beep yet, but I also am not hearing any more uh, perking. I'll give it a few more minutes. There it is. There's the beep. And that is seven minutes. And I was a little slow, but say seven minutes and 38 seconds for four cups of coffee. Uh, to me, that's kind of slow, but again, the one to four is supposed to optimize the brewing for a small batch. Maybe that's the reason. Anyway,
give this a pour. This is one of the things I want to test is one of the negative reviews of this was that it, it would, was impossible to pour without spilling. And there we go, I poured a nice mug and did not spill. Now, I'll clean this up and get it ready, and now we're gonna do the one to four cup again, only this time using the rich setting as opposed to the classic. Alrighty, I uh, rinsed everything out, set it up again with four cups, one to four this time instead of classic. We are on the rich setting. Again, two scoops. Use this this time. And here we go. All right, about 45 seconds longer on the uh, rich brew than on the classic. And we'll pour out a mug of this. Okay, visually, whoops, never fails. I don't really see a big difference. I, I say that because the pictures in the ad show that the, uh, the classic brew a bit translucent and the rich blue brew very dark. Let's have a taste. don't really taste a huge difference either. Uh, I, I'm thinking for the extra time, especially if you're brewing a full pot, I think I'd probably go with the classic. Incidentally, uh, once I get everything cleaned up and reset, the, the uh, I'll do one more test right now. I'm going to brew a full pot using the uh, classic brew and uh, see how long it takes and how it tastes. So I'll be back when it's ready. Okay, I'm set for the final test of the day. I have it, uh, the reservoir full to the max, the 14 cup. I uh, rinsed out uh, the uh, filter, the basket, uh, the carafe. Incidentally, since I am using the uh, permanent filter that came with it, you may also use a number four paper Melita filter. Uh, if you're using the permanent uh, basket filter like I am you you are going to get some sediment in the bottom of the coffee cup okay 14 cups of water we're going to have seven scoops of coffee and as I was uh, setting this up drinking the coffee I made before it was for my taste a little bit weak so rather than using uh, perfectly level scoops I'm going to use slightly heaping tea or uh, scoops. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, and seven. And the, the basket does hold seven scoops of coffee. Um, now we'll see when we make it if it uh, overflows, which has happened to me on other coffee makers, which is why even the 12 cup coffee makers, I never make more than eight to 10 cups at a time. Anyway, all set, ready to go. Let me get my stopwatch going here. In the brew, after about a minute or so, uh, in, in other reviews I've watched, there's a pause in the brewing. This is supposed to, again, optimize the flavor. I don't know, but uh, you probably won't notice that because I'm likely going to fast fast speed this uh, brewing process to, so as not to have an hour-long video. Okay, 15 and a half minutes for a pot of coffee is uh, a little slower than I'm used to, honestly. But again, I usually make 8 to 10 cups rather than what they're calling 14 here. So uh, you can be the judge of the speed. Now, one thing I want to check is, did the grounds overflow? No, they did not. So that's a good thing, although they're pretty pretty high, close to the edge, they did not overflow. So now all that remains is to try a cup, and this time I'm gonna try the cup as I usually take it. So here is my 16 ounce coffee mug, and adjust the camera a little bit. And when I have a cup of coffee, I normally, for a 16-ounce mug, use two sweet and lows and one creamer. And I get these creamers at Sam's Club as well. So we have a full pot. Let's see if we can pour without spilling. forgot was something with which to stir the coffee so I'll be back in just a second okay stir the coffee clean up my mess incidentally I, I spilled a couple of things but uh, there was no spillage from the carafe to the mug that was something that was complained about in the negative reviews and um, as clumsy as I am I, I didn't have any so, now, let me give this a try. Incidentally, if you want to help support this channel, you can do so by buying me a coffee. Uh, go to buymeacoffee.com slash cynical introvert. Okay, um... I would say this is a pretty good tasting cup of coffee. Uh, I'm glad I used the heaping uh, scoops because the initial four cups using level scoops was kind of weak. This, the strength is about right. Uh, the flavor is good. 
it, it's the way I like it. Uh, but what I'm going to do before I wrap this video up is I'm going to use this machine for several days to maybe a week. I don't know that I'll try every feature, but I'll use it the way I normally use a coffee machine. And then at the end of that time, I'll come back and give my final thoughts and uh, wrap up this video. I'm back after having used the uh, Ninja XL programmable 14 cup coffee maker for a week. Um, and I'm going to give my uh, final thoughts and wrap this video up. Uh, everything that uh, the uh, machine is advertised to be able to do, it does. Um, it makes a good tasting coffee. I uh, had no problem with that. Um, the uh, programmable timer as to uh, when you want the uh, coffee, if you want to set your timer to brew the coffee at a particular time, that works. It does have adjustable uh, warming plate uh, as for the uh, three temperatures, high, medium, low, as well as uh, up to four hours. Default is two hours of uh, keeping the coffee warm. Um, the uh, water carafe uh, and uh, reservoir I mentioned earlier in the video, although it's advertised as being exceptionally large, is not... In my opinion, not so. It's not any bigger than the, your other 12 cup coffee makers. But what makes it different is I have uh, my other coffee maker, which is a uh, Black & Decker, and I have no problem with it. While the carafe and the reservoir hold about the same amount of water as this, uh, the brew basket does not hold sufficient coffee grounds to make a full carafe of water where this does. I can make the full what they call 14 cups of water and put enough coffee in it so that I'm not having weak coffee. Uh, speaking of which, another feature of this is the uh, reg uh, classic or rich brew. Honestly, I couldn't tell the difference. Uh, that's just me. You might have a different opinion if you try them out. Um, so $80 list price I got it for $60. Um, it depends on what features you want. Um, for the features, I the, the two features that I other coffee makers I have and have had didn't have were the removable reservoir so that I didn't have to have a, a pitcher or a carafe full of water and bring it to the coffee machine. I could take the reservoir over to the sink, fill it, put it back. Uh, I found that appealing. I also find the fact that I can make a full, what they're calling 14, a full 70 ounces of coffee, which I, I couldn't on my other machines. So for me, those were good uh, features and made it sort of worthwhile. Um, over the years, I have had uh, several Mr. Coffees. Uh, I had a Cuisinart that was kind of expensive. Uh, right now I have a Black & Decker that I've had for about seven years. Um, it has all the features I need and cost about half of what this did. Although, again, this had a couple of features I wanted that the uh, Black & Decker and uh, other uh, coffee makers I've had uh, did not have. So, I mean, it's up to you what features are... Uh, necessary. Like I don't need uh, the uh, the warming tray to be adjustable either in temperature or in uh, the amount of time because I don't like to leave the coffee on the heat. When I make a pot of coffee, I immediately pour it into a thermal carafe so that it stays warm, but it's not continually cooking all day. And again, that's just me. Uh, I think for the features this has, um, you can certainly find coffee makers much, much more expensive the, with these particular features. Although if you don't need all these features, if you just need a basic coffee maker, you could also get one for less than half the price. So what I'm saying is uh, this is a decent machine. The two um, big uh, 
what would have been deal breakers that were in the negative written reviews. And this is one of the reasons I made this video. They said, one, uh, the uh, reservoir leaked, which I, it hasn't for me. Now, that's I mean, there's a gasket. It looks like a silicon gasket. And maybe eventually, probably eventually it will leak. But uh, some people were saying right out of the box it leaked or within a week it leaked. I've been using it for a week. It does not leak for me. I'm not saying that the uh, reviews written were, were not genuine. I'm just saying I didn't have that problem. The other thing is people said it was impossible to pour from the carafe the way the carafe was designed without spilling coffee. I'm kind of clumsy. You saw earlier in the video, I, I knocked over a half a cup of coffee. Um, I had no spills at all, all week. So again, that was a negative that uh, I didn't see. One thing I will call attention to, the carafe is unique in both its size and its design. And one thing people mentioned is you cannot buy a replacement carafe. If you break the carafe, then you have to buy a new machine. Um, other than that, I think, uh, again, it, f for the features it has, this is well worth it. And that is my review of the Ninja XL programmable 14 cup coffee maker. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, like my videos, feel free to share, leave a comment. Uh, what do you, if, if you've tried this or other Ninja coffee makers, tell me what you think. Uh, if there's another coffee maker, and again, I'm not a product reviewer, but I love coffee. So if there's another coffee maker that I'm missing out on, let me know. Come again.